Today we're talking about the slider, the can opener, the slice serve, and today it's all about getting the ball out of your opponent's strike zone. That's the differentiator between an advanced slice serve and an intermediate slice serve. And believe it or not, it's, it's relatively easy with this one tip, and that's what we're sharing today. Now this tip is part of a lot of different tips, a lot of different modules that are part of our serve accelerator course, where we talk about how to get more MPH on the flat serve, get your kick serve kicking, and of course, more slice, more bite on the slice serve. So without further ado, let's jump into this slice serve tip. All right, so now let's take a deeper dive into the swing path and how we wanna finish on the slice serve that's gonna help the serve bite. That serve that really pulls the opponent off the court, whether in singles or doubles, opening up the remainder of the court is absolutely critical for a sound strategy. So the first thing that we wanna think about with the slice serve is that we're swinging on a half moon shape. So what that means before even using a racket is as I work through the serve on the swing path, I'm working this way on the serve, all right? And so there's a lot of conversation about whether we pronate on the slice serve or not. And what we see on the Pro Tour, two things. We see discontinued pronation and continued pronation, all right? So discontinued pronation is more what I think people refer to when they, they're under the impression that they don't pronate on a slice serve. So as I work through my swing path, if I'm working through discontinued pronation, although I start to pronate here, my racket will continue and then come around, all right? Now, on continued pronation, I am actually pronating out through the serve, but I've made contact through here and then pronating out and coming through. Two ways to do it. Now, the discontinued pronation is gonna be the easiest when we're first learning to slice serve. And remember, this is simply where I'm working off to the side, all right? Scott showed us in the previous video how this is gonna work and it's really, really important. So now that we have that concept, let's try to bring the toss back closer to one. This is gonna help with disguise. Now I think in a really important concept which Scott touched on briefly is about where the contact with the ball is. You see here, cut the ear off the ball. All right, and that's a great bit of information, but that's not actually what's happening. It's just trying to get you to envision what the swing path is. When you're making contact with the ball, my hand being the ball, the strings are actually making contact towards that five or four mark, right? But if I think about cutting off the ear of the ball, ultimately it's gonna get me closer to this spot. All right, so now let me show you a couple drills, tossing at one o'clock that's also going to give you that big bite and I'm going to show you a really important finish that you have to have in order to have a fantastic slice serve. Okay so before we jump into the drill remember I spoke of a really important finish that you have to have on the slice serve and let's go over that for just a moment. So still starting from that abbreviated position and working through your service motion. Remember we don't worry about the pronation, just focus on the swing path, that half moon shape. So as I'm coming around, what I wanna focus on is finishing with my palm open. And here you can tell the racket tip is facing towards my left and the strings are open because my palm is open. It's absolutely critical in order to get your serve to bite. Not all serves are created equal, all right? especially slice serves. So you may get some slice in your serve, but if it's not staying low and fading away from your opponent, it's not gonna be the big weapon that you're looking for. Although it may be effective, right? But we're looking for that big weapon, that can opener, all right? So let's do this even without the racket, working through the shadow strokes themselves. I'm gonna work through the motion, and remember I'm working through that half moon. So as I get here, I'm gonna allow it to come around and I'm finishing with that palm open. All right, now you may have noticed I'm here at the service line. All right, and what this does is give me a great visual of what the swing pass should be. Remember we said that half moon shape. So from here in this exercise, my goal is to get the ball inside the service box, all right? Again, don't worry about the pronation. Just think about that contact around that four or five and finish with the palm up. If so, it should look something like this. If you do it correctly, it should look something like this. Okay. 
All right, so once you're comfortable here at the service line, it's time to move on to the next progression and do the same thing from the baseline. And we're gonna do this from a wide stance as well, a wide position on the baseline. We'll take a look at those now. All right, here back on the baseline, you can see I'm serving from this singles line pretty far wide on the baseline. And here, I, I'm still using an abbreviated serve path. I, I really don't want everything else kind of mixing in and messing things up. The pure focus here is where I'm contacting the ball in order to get that ball to break wide. All right, so from this abbreviated position, you can see I'm still tossing pretty close to one o'clock, right? Not using the three o'clock method. If you are struggling getting the ball out wide, you can use the three, but try to work back to one. And really importantly is the fact that I'm finishing with that open palm. That open palm is going to really help that half moon swing path and get that ball to break at the finish. Now don't be a stickler with the finish. You can see here I'm not trying to land on my left leg. In fact, my right foot is coming around on some of these. That's okay because that's not where we're putting the attention for now. We're just getting comfortable with serving from that wide position getting on the outside of the ball, making that contact between four and five and getting the ball to break using the open palm. All right, guys, hope the tips helped a ton. This will actually conclude the preview to our serve accelerator system. This is a course that will help you get more in pH on that flat serve, help your kick serve and your slider. If you missed the other previews to these videos on the kick serve and flat serve, definitely check those out. We'll link them. Um, but if you have any questions, if you have any feedback, throw them in the comments section and make sure you share the video. That actually helps our channel a ton. We'll see you very soon. Take care, everyone.